Well, the next thing I'd love to talk about then is a buffered output stream. So a quick synopsis, a quick overview about what the slide deck will cover. We'll cover an introduction to the buffered output stream. We'll talk about the inner workings of the buffered output stream. We'll talk about the class declaration, the constructors, the methods, and give some sample code. So a quick introduction here. A buffered output stream in Java is a concrete subclass of the filter output stream class. It wraps or buffers an output stream into a buffered stream and makes write operations on the stream much more efficient and fast. So the Java buffered output stream adds a buffer to an output stream that stores individual data in bytes temporarily in some memory buffer that our application has access to. And so it's used to speed up uh, the output by reducing the number of disk or file writes by adding additional layer functionality around an already pre-existing underlying uh, output stream. So for example, suppose we want to write data into a file using the file output stream, such as doing a, uh, let's say our reference is false. So false.write and then we give it a character. Here we invoke the write method to write a character into a file and the operating system has to write that character to the file for us. So now suppose we wanna write 50 characters into a file, the underlying operating system would be called 50 times to write 50 characters. And that's a huge waste of time. So what we could do instead is buffer our output to a file by wrapping a file output stream within a buffered output stream. And that will first write characters into our temporary block of memory called the buffer. And then all the characters from the buffer will uh, get written at once into the file by the operating system. And so the buffered output stream will take much less time to uh, perform write operations. And so just to give you a visualization of this, we would, uh, our Buffered output stream is a buffer internally between the program and the disk or the destination where our data sync is at. And during the write operation, the individual data is stored temporarily in the memory buffer. And then when the memory buffer gets full, all the data from the buffer is then written to the disk at once. And so a buffered output stream adds more efficiency than writing data directly into a stream and makes the performance much, much faster. And the reason why is it reduces the number of times we have to access the disk to go ahead and write. So let's take a quick look at the class declaration of our buffered output stream. Uh, so our buffered output stream class is derived from the class filter output stream, which again, the concept of a filter output stream is just, it's a type of stream that requires a pre-existing stream to get passed to it and it adds functionality to that stream. So, uh, so buffered output stream has an output stream as a base class. Uh, it implements closable, flushable, and auto-closable, all the things output streams require. And so but the, the basic general declaration of our buffer uh, input stream, output stream, this should say output stream, uh, class is a uh, public class buffered output stream extends the filter output stream and it would implement oops, and it would implement closable flushable and auto closable and again it's been is part of the java uh, spec since Java 1, and it's in the java.io buffered output stream package so that we can import it. So let's look at the constructors. Uh, to wrap an output stream, buffered input stream class provides two constructors that are as follows, and it's going to be very similar to the buffered uh, input stream. So the, uh, the first constructor we're going to look at can take in that an output stream instance. So this constructor creates the new buffered output stream object that buffers an output stream specified by that output stream. And it uses the default buffer size for writing. And it's the same buffer size as the input stream. I'm going to say it's uh, 8,192 bytes. And so the general syntax to wrap a file output stream into a buffered output stream is, well, we would create, let's say, a new file output stream. And let's say we pass in some string that we want to write 
our file to and we get a reference to our file output stream then when we construct our new buffered output stream i should say output stream when we create our new there we go when we create our new buffer output stream we're going to pass in that pre-existing output stream and then that's going to create a new buffered output stream that we could do all of our operations on then Oh, I guess I need to spell that correctly too. Okay, so let's just take a look at the second constructor. Uh, so the second constructor will take in as a first parameter an output stream uh, reference. And then as a second parameter, it would take in a size. And so that size allows us to specify what the buffer size is. And so the general syntax of this would be, okay, Let's say that we want to create a new buffered output stream that has uh, 1,024 bytes of buffer space. So we'll pass in our reference as the first parameter and some integer value as our second parameter about how many things we want to be able to store before it writes to the file. Okay, so buffered out output stream methods. The buffered output stream class in Java does not define any new methods. All the methods in the buffered output stream are inherited from the output stream class. So some important methods are uh, the write, where we can pass in a integer value that represents a byte and that allows us to uh, write that specified byte to the buffered output stream. We also have another write method where we can pass in a uh, byte array, and then we can pass in uh, the offset of n and the number of bytes we wanna write as m. So that method writes the bytes from the specified byte input stream and so it'll write those bytes into the byte array starting from the given nth byte and all the way until you hit the number m we have a flush method uh, the flush method uh flushes the buffered output stream right it can be used to clear the internal buffer by forcing the output stream to write all the data present in the buffer to the destination file. So one nice thing about the flush is even if the buffer is not all the way full, if you call flush on the output stream, it'll just force it to write to the file. And then you have the close method. That method closes the buffered output stream. And then once the method is invoked, we can't write to the uh, any data to that output stream anymore. It's, it's closed. But you always have to close uh, your output stream, otherwise your data will be corrupted and you'll lose it. And just like all the other streams we've looked at, it's always checked exception. So you either have to throw an IO exception on the method that uses or performs any IO operations, or you have to do it in a try catch blocks. Always a reminder that's a thing though. So let's take a quick example of the uh, of this. Let's make a sample program where we will improve the efficiency of writing data into a file using the buffered output stream. So in this program, we will write the text information in the file using a buffered output stream. So let's go here and actually jump over to our IntelliJ. And let me just close out of these pre-existing projects. So I'm gonna open here, buffered output stream. I'm gonna go ahead and import the buffered output stream class into my application i'm going to go ahead and import the file output stream class into my application because the buffered output stream needs some other output stream to build itself i'm going to create just a tester class here so i can have a main method so we can have an application i'm required to put all my io uh, code into a try block so i'm also going to have a catch where i just print out the results so inside of my actual code i'm going to create a new file output stream and I'm going to go ahead and give it the path that's going to create a text file that's going to be called out underscore buff1.txt. So that's what the file I'm going to attach to. And then I'm going to save a reference to that file output stream. Then I'm going to use that file output stream to actually construct a new instance of a buffered output stream. I'm going to save that reference of a buffered output stream under this uh, name boss, buffered output stream. Now I'm going to create a string here Welcome to UNO Computer Science. And I'm going to get the byte array of that string. So I'm going to call get bytes and I'm going to save that into this byte array called uh, B. And here, this is probably the way you probably more used to seeing your, your arrays declared. So I'll be consistent with what you're used to. So a byte array of B. 
And here, we'll go ahead and write that byte array to our buffered output, and then we'll close it. And then we'll show that we've successfully written. So let's go ahead and run that. And we'll say that we've successfully written. And all of a sudden here, I do have an out buff one TXT where I didn't have that before. And we could see there is my string. Welcome to you know computer science. Okay, perfect. Okay, the next example that I'd want to do with the buffered output stream is to create a program where we can flush all of the uh, data present in the internal buffer to the file. So this is our example here. Let me jump over here to our uh, buffered output stream tester two. So here, I'm going to import into my source code the buffered output stream class. I'm going to import into here my file output stream class because a buffered output stream requires a, a output stream in order for it to build itself. I'll also go ahead and import the IO exception. I'll create a new uh, class file so we can make an application. I'll make a main method. And here I'm going to show you the alternate way we can do this. So, so far, I've only showed you really the try catch method, but here I could say my main method throws an IO exception. And so now I don't have to encapsulate everything in a try because if I do generate a IO exception, I'm just going to throw that to whatever invoke my main method. And I'm not going to handle it internally. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to just force the client code to my main method to handle it, which will just be the JVM and I'll just throw it to the console if that happens. Here, I'm going to create a string called hello Java. Here, I'm going to create a new file output stream, and I'm going to give it a file path that's going to attach to a file called out underscore buff2.txt. We're going to create a new instance of a file output stream. I'm going to save a reference to that, and I'm going to use that to actually create a new buffered output stream. And I'm actually going to use the second parameter to define a size, a buffer size of 1024. And I'm going to save a reference to this buffered output stream. Then I'm just going to say, hey, get the bytes of this string and write that. And then I'm going to flush all of the data from the buffer. And then I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to check to see if it's, I'll report that it's successfully written, but then we'll check to ensure that. So here, let's run that successfully written. All of a sudden, here I have an out buff2.txt. And there it is, hello Java. Perfect. And that's that's all I really have to say about the buffered output stream.